Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. I have a very exciting announcement to make today. Back by popular demand, we're doing round two of Tor.comathon. This is my announcement video for Tor.comathon 2023. So if you're new in the past year, welcome. You may not know this, but some of my favorite books come from some of my favorite imprints, Tor and Tor.com, which are connected. Tor.com in particular, I think is doing an incredible job of putting out high quality science fiction and fantasy with a lot of diverse representation as well. In terms of race and ethnicity of the authors they're publishing, queer representation, I just love them. They have a lot of great novellas. I like a novella for a readathon because they're quick and easy to get through and kind of fun, but they also do novels as well. And of course, Tor is a historic, well-known imprint for those of us who are lovers of science fiction and fantasy. So last year I ran with this idea to do a readathon focused on reading books, especially novellas, but novels as well, from Tor.com. And it was a huge hit. A lot of you loved it. I've been getting requests all year long for people asking, are you bringing it back? Are you going to do Tor.comathon again? So yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes. We are back and this time it is a little bit bigger and better. It is at least longer and expanded. Last year you could only count books from Tor.com towards the reading prompts. Some people had said, hey, it would be cool to also be able to read Tor titles. So we did it. This year you can read books from Tor or Tor.com and in fact there is one prompt on the bingo board, I'll show you the bingo board in a minute, that is designed to get you to read an older title from Tor, which I think is kind of fun for those of you who want to do it. Last year I think we made the readathon two weeks, this time it is an entire month. So this does not need to be the only thing you're doing, although if you want this to be exclusively what you're doing in March, more power to you. We are going to be hosting this for the entire month of March. We have a group book, we have a bingo board, I've got a bunch of amazing co-hosts and there are going to be some live reading sprints on YouTube and also newly this year perhaps on TikTok. So stay tuned for that. I'm very excited to be bringing this readathon back to all of you and I hope you have a fun time this year as well. So here's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you the bingo board. I'm going to go over some of the guidelines for the readathon. I'm going to talk about the group book and I'm going to talk a little bit about my TBR for the readathon, some of the books that I may pick up to meet the challenges. If you are looking for additional recommendations, I did a video last year where I talked about 33 different titles from Tor.com, so I will link that video up above. You can go and check it out if you're looking for that. Also, I frequently read <laughs> books from them. I actually had several on my best of the year list. So Siren Queen by Niveau, A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland are just a couple of examples. What else? A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers, The Keeper Six by Kate Elliott. All of those are Tor.com titles. So there are many, many, many options to meet all of the challenges. And I hope you have as much fun with this as I do. So let's take a look at the bingo board and while we're there I'm also going to announce all of the amazing people who've agreed to co-host with me this year and they will all be linked down below if you want to go and follow them. Highly recommend. They're all wonderful. They are Knox Reads, Four Paws in a Book, Wild Book Garden, Book Hooked Heather. She is over on Instagram and might do like a live Instagram reading sprint which I think should be fun. The Broken Spine, Native Lady Book Warrior, and Keisha's Literary Labyrinth, who is primarily on TikTok as well as Instagram, and I think she might be doing a live over on TikTok. So thank you so much to all of you for agreeing to join me this year. I think it's going to be really fun. Stay tuned. There will be a schedule for all of the reading sprints available. Each of us is going to do at least one during the month, maybe more. I might do like a couple throughout the month. Uh, depending on what my schedule ends up being like. So stay tuned for that. There will be a schedule going up. I will post it on Instagram and also on the community tab on YouTube. Also, if you want to make a TBR or post what you're reading, I would love to see it. So feel free to tag me either here on YouTube or over on other social media sites and you can use the hashtag tor.comathon23 if you were talking about it. With that said, let's take a look at this wonderful bingo board. One thing to note is I really like a chill readathon, and so there are not a lot of rules for this. 
I want this to be as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. Because of that, we picked a group book that will almost get you a bingo if you choose to do one book for multiple prompts. That is an option for you. You can do it either way. Last year we had some people who were like, no, I'm going for a blackout, a different book for every single prompt. Whew, I like props to you if you wanna do that. We have some people who are like, no, I'm gonna like get the most bang for my buck as possible and get one or two books that meet a whole bunch of the prompts and just go for a bingo totally cool. If you want to just like read the group book with us and talk about it in the live show at the end of the month, you can do that. Like really, the world is your oyster. This is just supposed to be a fun community event where we can get together and read some great sci-fi and fantasy and uh, hopefully read from some new authors and some diverse authors. So I'm just going to read across. Here are the prompts for the bingo board this year. Read a new to you author, a space opera, an LGBT plus author, a book with a hat or helmet on the cover. A book that's been on your TBR for a year or more. A 2023 release. The group book. We'll get to that in a moment. A 1900s release. This is the one where I'm going to direct you to look at some tour titles. I think this could be a fun opportunity to go and read some older backlist science fiction and fantasy that Tor published, even some classic sci-fi and fantasy. They've got some really, really great options. And if people are wanting some suggestions for that prompt, let me know. I could make a recommendation video. Probably wouldn't go up until sometime in early March, but that is a possibility. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want. A book with a weapon on the cover. Interpret these however you would like to. A book with birds on the cover. A romantic book. This could either be a sci-fi or fantasy romance, or it could just be a book with a strong romantic subplot, however you want to interpret that. A book that is fairy tale inspired or a retelling of a fairy tale. A black indigenous or person of color author. A non-US author, somebody who is not from the United States a disabled author, a book under 200 pages, a world with magic, a trans or non-binary author, a book that is in a series. This prompt could be used to continue or complete a series that you've been meaning to get to. A book that is a genre blend, so a sci fantasy or a fantasy horror or a historical fantasy, something that is kind of blending genres in some way. A sapphic book, this means a book with either a romantic relationship between two women in the book or a book with a female main character who is bisexual, lesbian, or pansexual. A book involving artificial intelligence, an alternate history, and a portal fantasy. So those are all of the prompts and I think there are a lot of books put out by Tor and Tor.com that could cover those prompts and hopefully it's a fun way for you to sort of build your TBR or find books that you've been meaning to read. So you're probably wondering what is the group book. The group book is going to be Even Though I Knew the End by C.L. Polk. It is a novella and it is one that I've read before. I really enjoyed this. It'll be a reread for me and I think it'll be a fun one to pick up. It's not too long but it is a newer release. This one has a central sapphic romance. It's set in an alternate version of early 1900s Chicago with magic and it's a bit of a murder mystery. It's got a female investigator and it does get a bit gritty and brutal at times, but I really loved it. I thought it was a lot of fun and I think it'll be a great pick for the group book. So as I said, if you read this book, it potentially could count for a whole bunch of prompts on the bingo board. Honestly, more than I think I even realized before, before I sat down and uh, took a look at all of the prompts it covers, but you can almost get a bingo with this. So this plus one other book could give you a bingo. If you're a slow reader or you just don't have the bandwidth to pick up a lot of books for the readathon and you want to participate, you could just read this, read one other thing. Again, it's a pretty short book and uh, bam, you can get a bingo. It's fun. So here are all of the prompts that this novella could count for. In addition to the fact that it could count for a new to you author if you haven't read from C.L. Polk in the past. So this would count for romantic. It also counts for genre blend. It is a mystery fantasy blend, obviously for the group book. It is also under 200 pages. It is sapphic. It is from an LGBT plus author. It's a world with magic. 
It has a hat or helmet on the cover. As you can see, there is a, a lady wearing a hat. It also has birds on the cover. It counts for reading from a Black, Indigenous, or Person of Color author, as well as a trans or non-binary author, because the author is Black and non-binary. Finally, it counts for alternate history and for reading from a non-US author. C.L. Polk is Canadian. Whew, so it's a lot. I didn't realize how many prompts this was going to fulfill, but if you take a look at the bingo board, you can almost get a bingo with this. It can count for a lot of prompts, or you can just make it count for one of the prompts if you're one of the people who's like, no, I'm going to take the month and like hit all of those squares with a different book. However you want to approach it, this is the group book. All of the hosts will be reading it and we will have a live show at the end of the month. Stay tuned for details on that. So I know you're probably all wondering, Bethany, what's on your TBR for this readathon? And I am going to tell you a few of the things I may pick up. I am a structured mood reader, which means that I like to have lots of options and then I sort of select from among them. I will definitely be doing a reread of Even Though I Knew the End, which I'm excited about, and I actually think I have the audio book for this from Libra FM as well, which works out nicely. It'll be a nice fun reread for me. I also have a few advanced copies that I was sent from Tor or Tor.com that I'm planning to pick up. One is Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh. This is a Tor.com title that's coming out in April. It's science fiction, it's queer. The publicists seem to have really loved it and I'm excited to check it out. Then for a Tor title coming out in April, I have The Warden by Daniel M. Ford. And the thing that sold me on this is they said it's like, Twin Peaks, but with magic wizards. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I would love that. That sounds amazing. Thank you. Um, so hoping to maybe pick this up for the readathon. I also have an e-arc of The Lies of the Ajungo, which is a debut Tor.com novella from a Black author that is, I believe, African-inspired fantasy. I didn't look a lot at the details, but this just looked great and I want to read it. I always love all their novellas. I also have an e-arc of A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. I've enjoyed some things that I've read from T. Kingfisher and I have heard some good things about this book in particular. I believe it's a haunted house house story, but I'm not 100% sure this is another one coming out, I think, in April. The final e-arc that I have is Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. This is another novella coming out from Tor.com. And while I had mixed feelings about Jade City, because as I, I know it's very, very popular, it's just like some tropes that are not my favorite, I'm anxious to try something different from Fonda Lee, and this is very different. It's fantasy, it's got, I think, bird shifters maybe it's got something to do with giant birds I don't really know but the cover looks cool and it is not set in the same world so I'm gonna pick that up then for a few other books that I may pick up that have been sitting on my TBR one is Primary Inversion by Catherine Asaro this is really old sci-fi romance from what I know it's been on my TBR for a while it is a tour title from the 1900s so this is the book that I am tentatively gonna be reading for that 1900s prompt and I don't know how well it will hold up but I feel like it'll be fun and I think I also have an audiobook for this so that's good. I've also got a few other novellas that have been on my radar I've been wanting to read. A Taste of Honey by Kaya Shante Wilson. During Tor.comathon last year I read the first book in this series and I think this is a companion novel. I really really loved the first one and most people seem to like this one even better so I'm very excited about it. It's like African futurism sci fantasy by a black queer author so fits for some of the prompts and also I've really loved the writing that I've read from this author in the past. Then I've got Light Chaser by Peter F. Hamilton and Gareth Powell and I heard that this one is surprisingly romantic. It doesn't look based on the cover like you would think it would be romantic but I want to say there's like a political marriage of convenience or something like that and I heard some good things. So I am intrigued. I would like to read it. It's also pretty short, a novella. And lastly is The Red Threads of Fortune by Neon Yang. I read the first novella in this companion novella series last year for Tor.com and enjoyed it and have since read other things from Neon Yang that I've really enjoyed. And I want to continue on with this. I think there's four novellas in the series. So this seems like a good time to continue on with the next one. 
So there you have it. That is my Tor.comathon TBR for March. I am so excited to be bringing it back with some amazing co-hosts. I hope you all are excited as well, and I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Are you planning on joining in? How are you going to approach building your TBR? Do you immediately know what you're going to read? Are you going to do a little bit of research? Let me know in the comments down below. And there is also an open channel for this in my Discord server. So if you want to join us over there, we'll be talking throughout the month and that will be fun. I think I covered everything. I'm in conversation with Tor about possibly doing another giveaway, but I don't have details on that yet so maybe stay tuned we'll see if that ends up coming together thank you so much join me in march it's going to be fun and uh, keep an eye out on socials for further information about dates and times for all of the things talk to me in the comments down below if you like this video it always helps if you give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time